Dear guests and conference participants, by the way, I'm Olga Jora. Uh, I shouldn't forget that. I'm one of the organizers, and I'm wearing a tie to show that I'm one of the organizers of the conference. It's a great pleasure and honor for me to welcome you all to the conference, Occupied Istanbul Urban Politics, Culture, and Society, 1918-1923. It's really nice to address real people, talk to you face to face, and although I know that there are guests joining us through Zoom and apparently will be on YouTube too, I welcome you all. We have organized a busy conference for you. In three days, about 30 participants will share their research with us and two distinguished guests will de deliver their keynotes. The conference will take place in three different venues at SALT tonight, at Boatich University tomorrow and online on Saturday. As you see, it is a really a hybrid conference in every sense of the word. We had originally plan planned the conference to take place in the fall of 2020. Yet, as we all well know the reasons, we had to postpone it until this very day. Maybe I should go by the Turkish saying uh, for silver lining, that despite the delay of, of two years, I believe we have prepared a conference which you the participants and the guests will enjoy. We'll have fruitful academic discussions and sow seeds for future collaborations. My colleague, Daniel MacArthur Seal, will provide you a fuller account of what we are trying to achieve in these three days. I will only utter a few words about why this conference is important for me. I teach courses, including survey courses and seminars, on the late Ottoman and Republican history at Boazic University. I vividly remember the very first time when I devoted a special week to the occupation era in my survey course. It was with some hesitation. I really didn't know the scholarship to a great extent. And I have to admit, I still don't know the field very well. And therefore looking forward to know more in the coming three days. However, my hesitation didn't only stem from my lack of knowledge of the period and the scholarship. The question, was where and how should I locate this period in my survey? Chronologically, it was easy between the empire and the nation state, but was it really the case? Should I present it as a transitional period or was it a unique epoch in Ottoman and even world history? Should I talk about is it as the end of the empire or should I focus on the nationalist struggle in Anatolia? These were some of the major questions for me and were not easy to answer them satisfactorily. Still, I have not answered them. Yet soon, as someone who worked on the late Ottoman social history and someone who tries to provide a critical history uh, of the Kemalist period and approaches historiography, I realized that I had, I had a lot to learn from the works on the occupation. The more I read, the more I noticed the significance of the cultural, social, and political developments of the period in the formation of the society and culture uh, of the Turkish nation state. Sometimes open, sometimes in discrete and convoluted ways, these connections took place. For instance, the memoirs of the period or the memories of the period and how they were formed and reformed over and over again became one of the many topics that I have been paying special attention to. For instance, think of the phrase Mütarek the press of armistice period, which is still used as a spare, spare word by politicians across the political spectrum in Turkey. Yet there are many other examples. The attempts of the Islamist scholars and intellectuals to form an academy to control the public morality of the Muslim community of Istanbul is another interesting topic. The institution is still remembered by some circles with lament as it is seen as the pinnacle of the Muslim, the power of the Muslim ulema and the intellectuals before their downfall in the following decade. Yet many tend to forget the wretched conditions of the war-ridden Muslim populations of the city, whom those intellectuals were trying to save, save in their own ways. Speaking of the wretched conditions, the restructuring of the Armenian communities by the survivors of the genocide is something we should never forget. The image of, images of the barefoot orphans wandering on the streets of the city, migrants and immigrants crushing each other for a piece of bread were a reality of the period. 
It was also a reality of the demography of the future Turkish state, a legacy that it denies since then. Or we can also talk about the strong labor and socialist movements before they would be fresh soon. Likewise, the nightly lifelike sex, drugs, and jazz. Probably all of these followed one another as they passed along the streets of the city. Thus, slowly I noticed that the war was fought in Anatolia, the Republic was found in Ankara, true, but the society, culture, and the politics of the period, the period of occupation of Istanbul, left an understudied heritage to the nation state of Turkey. Thus, my hesitation to focus on the occupation period in my classes lesson, as I began to think more about the connections and breaks, something I believe we will be all doing in the coming three days. And therefore, it is also a great pleasure for me to be part of this conference and host scholars whose works fault me a lot. Daniel will mention and thank the institutions and some people who make this event possible. Here, as a member of the Boadish University Department of History, one of the main organizers of the conference, I just want to thank Daniel and on his behalf, British Institute of Ankara, at Ankara, sorry, for spending much time and effort for organizing this conference. <coughs> I also would like to thank especially to our conference assistants, Fatih Uyuk and Alison Panelas, whose efforts are essential in the organization and hopefully in the smooth running of the conference. And finally, once again, I would like to thank you, the participants and our guests for joining us. I wish you have a pleasant conference.